all right hello everyone and peace of christ to all of you i hope my voice coming good and clear uh, please inform me if you have any difficulty from your side uh, about the sound uh, you know today in the morning we could not uh, go live because the internet was bad and i hope now it's going to be better uh, let me know please if the sound quality is not good because i did some change in the setting of the software uh, <clears throat> today we'll talk about many things and we will try to make it short so you guys can download the video uh, easier and we will see how the Quran contains science you know I noticed lately there is many kids this is not the only one who they are making like uh, videos just in order to get uh, subscribers to their uh, account so they make videos a reaction of a Catholic person to the Quran and you know Muslims they go over those videos like crazy when you say that so they make those videos and they themselves even not Muslims just to make people subscribe like you start in YouTube you might spend a year you don't have, have even 500 subscribers but when they make those videos about Islam you know Muslims they subscribe from everywhere and you will have a huge channel very fast so many of them they are doing it as a business and obviously it is However, for us, what we do is not a business, it's serious, and those evil kids, you know, they knew it's evil, and yet, yet they do it, but, you know, life is full of good and evil. Today, we will watch this video of uh, Mr. Kim, who obviously is not convinced of what he hears, and this is why you see him in the picture doing his moves in his mouth and his eyes. The guy is explaining to him about his God, supposedly, and look at the move in his face uh, this picture actually from a video this person next to him was explaining why Muslim don't eat pork and I found the answer the most hilarious ever the guy he said that pork can decay faster <laughs> in fact the Quran did not say really don't eat pork the Quran says you eat pork if you cannot find something else so it's forbidden for you to eat if there is available different food but if there is not and you are hungry you eat pork and this is telling us that the pork is not bad because how come the Quran is saying that you can survive with pork and it's okay suddenly Allah compromise what about Allah he uh, uh, bring you the food you like I mean you are dying let us say so why need to eat pork isn't it Allah is the one who support you and pork is haram so this is a very funny uh, statement the sound is slow oh you mean my sound is not too strong hmm okay give me a second please to see why the sound is not strong okay what about now is it better now is the sound higher now is it better one two one two do you hear me better I don't know people they are saying sound please all right let me let me check the sound the funny I just check with my phone the sound was coming really good on my side so why it's coming down from your side I'm not sure really you know very low okay give me a second hold on Um, all right sound sound okay I guess now you cannot complain can you is it good now how are we are how, how are we now is the sound good one two three four hello it's you looking for I'm going better sound good not good okay all right I just squeezed uh, uh, Jibreel you know and Jibreel he helped me and he made the sound better thank you Jibreel you can go now no Jibreel go hey come on just go now <laughs> you are so cute unbelievable 
especially when he moves his tail, like I can't believe it. <laughs> anyway, uh, <clears throat> all right, we go back to our topic. As long as the sound is good now, and let us not to waste time and see what Kim will say to us. Uh, I will try to go fast over those things because we mentioned them before, but to, just to remind in case somebody he watched the videos again, the uh, first time maybe, uh, he will see what we spoke of. So this is uh, Mr. Kim, and he was like, wow, surprised in, about the Quran. Okay, surprised about what? We will see. And you can tell actually from his, uh, from his, uh, the way he is acting, it's fake, you know, I mean, yeah. It's, it's totally fake. It's, this kid, he don't even know how to lie. Go and learn how to lie from Muhammad. Listen carefully. Water is essential for all living things. Water. We all know that water is vital to life. But the Quran makes a very unusual claim. We made every living thing from water. Will they not believe? Hmm. Oh, Quran. In oh, this verse, right water. Quran, oh, right there. Quran. Oof. 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 Right there. I mean, everybody knows that people live, live by water. Without water, we die. I mean, look. No, the Quran, guys, the guy in the video, he said the Quran made a strange claim. I mean, how the Quran making a strange claim by saying the water is very important to life. Like, do we usually drink gas? And now Quran discovered that we can live by water. So the Quran made a strange claim. Look, look, did you hear it? Did you hear it? The Quran made this unusual claim, unusual claim. This is never heard before. It's a very unusual claim. We made every living thing from water. Will they not believe? Quran. In this verse, Quran. water is pointed. You know, just to tell you, by the way, uh, my my family, my grandfather, he, he never drank water. You know, we Arab usually uh, we, we used to uh, you know drink Pepsi Cola. You know, seven up. This is why my grand grand grandfather he used to walk seven steps a jump. You know, so when Allah He said in the Quran that. Uh, something like this about the, the water that was like shocking like in the Quran my dad he hear that same same happened happened to Kim same what happened to my dad when first time he saw it you know he said I need to go to the bathroom however this is a stupid statement because this is a contradiction for the Quran for the Quran says Allah created creatures have nothing to do with water and chapter 55 verse number 50, 15 as an example Allah, he said, he created the genie from fire of free of smoke. And there's nothing in this fire, no water. It's fire. It's totally the opposite of water. Fire and water, they are not <laughs> the friends, correct? So from fire, we created genie. And not to forget to mention that Muhammad, he made it clear that the angels are made from light. So neither the light, neither the angels, neither the genie are created from water. But the Quran, remember, says we created every living thing from water, which is obviously a stupid contradiction by the one who made the Quran. The first one got busted. It's stupid. But, you know, when you are desperate, looking for something to make it as if it is a miracle, eh, you know, I don't, I don't blame them. They have empty, bankrupt religion. So they have to fabricate the stories in order to make people believe in such a thing. Let us go to the second one. I'm not going to play all the details because we could then bust it already. You can watch it yourself. Number two, the iron. Iron. Iron is not natural to the earth. Iron. It did not. Iron, did he say iron is not natural to the earth? Did he say that? Okay. I want you to take note. Iron is not natural to the earth. Take note of that form on the earth but came down to earth from outer space oh really, oh, really? this oh. may sound strange but it's true it's true you, you i mean guys just go to google right now and you will find that iron is exist always in the earth because you see when when you say that uh, uh, the iron came with meteor which is science says this is true but meteor is not what made the iron in the earth the earth already, the magma, which is in the core of the earth, have a lot of iron. This is why volcanoes area, you will see that the soil for farming is so good for it have many, uh, uh, let us say, uh, 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 necessity for 
uh, uh, trees and grass and things to grow very well very healthy farming can be done in this area why because there is many things come from the magma and one of them is the iron and actually the human being his blood have iron so if Allah sent the iron to the man that's mean the man when he was on earth he have no iron too in his blood because remember <laughs> he sent it to him and the funny is when we go to the verse in the Quran and we read about the iron you will see it says that Allah he sent down the iron and he sent down the messengers and he sent down the book which means the Quran he speak about everything I sent down anything you know is sent down so how come the iron is now mentioned that it is sent down physically because you will notice here we send down the messengers we send down the book as a balance we send down justice uh, we send, and down we send down the iron which is a material for mighty war the Quran speaking about that Allah gave you the sword so you can slaughter each other for he is the devil actually just to show you how the Muslims they try to fool people isn't it the Quran says that Allah he sent down uh, feather feather who is the one who sent feather Allah is that physically because if you are saying that the Aaron was sent physically then the feather is sent uh you know the feather is sent physically and that's mean we are chicken if you read the translation you will see none of them says the word feather where is the word feather i don't see it but it says we send down change the translator this is yusuf ali let us see uh Maududi. O children of Adam, indeed we send down your garment. <laughs> so how come when Allah he says we send down the iron, they take it literally, and when Allah he sent down the garment for Adam, <laughs> it's not literally. And not only that, in Arabic it says, Libasun yuari so atakum warishan wa feather and feather. Why Adam was a chicken, he was Indian, maybe? Either he was a chicken or he was an Indian, American Indian. They used to have, a, you know, like trad tradition clothing. They used to have a, a feather or maybe a Roman. What do you mean you send the feather down? And the funny, I cannot find one translation mentioning the word feather. What happened to the word feather? Let us see this guy here. Maybe we can get somebody have little honesty, little dignity. Well, I don't see the word feather. Anyone see it? It's gone. Let us see different translation. Uh, this is Itani. Let us see different one. Dara dara badi. Dara 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 dara. Where is the feather? It's gone. There is no feather. The word feather is gone totally. You know because it's funny and stupid. Let us see maybe different one. Let us see. Uh, what about this one? Here we go. Finally, we found somebody have little dignity and he put the word feathers. Do you see it? Do you see it? Brother, according to science, brother, there was no feather in earth, brother. And then Allah, he sent it down to earth, brother. And the brother, your garment, brother, is made by Allah, not in China. If you don't believe me, brother, flip the ticket in the top of your back and you will see it says made in Allah manufacture in seven galaxy behind the seven seas by the seven majid. Do you see the hypocrisy and how they try to fool people? We send down. This is a chapter seven, verse number 26. So this is obviously stupid and it's a garbage. Not only that, but isn't it Muhammad? He said that. Allah he created because the guy in the video he says 
it took them millions of years tons of millions of years for the meteor to come but look what Muhammad he said just to show you how those people they lie I mean they, they don't uh, 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 they don't they don't even have dignity to present their religion those people obviously they are ashamed of their God and they fabricate things to make their God look good otherwise I cannot find a reason for somebody he's a believer he fabricate things to make his God look good obviously they are ashamed of it Allah the exalted the glorious created the clay in Saturday and he created the mountains in Sunday and he created the trees on Monday and he created entire in labor the Tuesday and he created the light in Wednesday so according to the Quran you see in the Bible in the Bible you will see that God he created heaven and earth heaven is created because you need to put this, the earth you cannot create the earth in if there is no space you have to have a space for it right so God created heaven and earth and then when and God said from the beginning let light be uh, you know uh, 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 be light and light was the word Wednesday in the Bible is speaking about creating the Sun supposedly but the light is already exist here Muhammad is trying to copy from the Old Testament but he is as usual he fabricate many things and he added stories and it's so it can be so stupid so look what happened Allah created the clay in Saturday but in the video he says it take millions and millions of years but Muhammad said he created that in Saturday he created the mountains in Sunday created the trees in Monday created the, the entire labor in Tuesday created light in Wednesday if you remember the that he was making fun of somebody in the debate you know did that you remember the that he was saying to him your Bible says uh, that the Sun was created in one day so the earth was without light for you know four days five days <laughs> how that can be <laughs> but the Bible says from the beginning before he created anything he said let be light and light was the fact it is his stupid prophet who says that the Sun created in Wednesday and there was no other light and then he caused the animal to spread in Tuesday and he created Adam after a Asr of Friday and here by the way Muhammad as a fool as usual he forgot to mention Eve well, okay, so now he finished where is Eve what he sent uh, send he sent Eve later by shopping I mean by shipping uh, by Prime Amazon what is Eve he created Adam Friday afternoon and then he went to sky okay what about Eve it, it was Eve a special edition <laughs> all right guys so this is obviously it's a stupid thing the Quran and the hadith oppose them and expose them so the second one is a hocus let us continue and see the third one and look at this guy mouth look look at his face man this guy is surprised like wow uh, scientists mm, have found that billions of years ago billions not, not billions billions of years and his as a prophet he says Allah created the, the dust in Saturday <laughs> let us go to number three number three where is number three okay number three and this one is really hilarious you see, I'm trying to go fast, so, so those who want to make video later, they can cut it off easy and they can repost it, all right? Okay. I'm protecting the earth. The sky protects right. the earth from the lethal rays of That's the right. sun. If the sky did not exist, then the sun's radiation would have killed... Okay, cool, cool. What, what do you mean if the sky did not exist? I mean, have you ever heard of a stupid statement? statement? If the sky is not exist we will die I mean it's, uh, the sky is uh, protecting us from the x-ray of the Sun the sky they don't even know I mean this guy he speaks supposedly perfect English not this guy not the Korean guy the other guy but it's you don't see the sky you see the atmosphere what sky okay so now they are saying that the Quran speak about the atmosphere let us see if this is true killed off all life on earth oh. Mm. It also acts like a blanket wrapped around Earth to protect it from the freezing cold of space. Uh huh. Oh, uh -huh. oh but that's the cold. Oh, if this temperature was to reach Earth, then the planet would freeze over instantly. Uh huh. Uh huh. The sky also protects life on Earth by warming the surface through heat retention, greenhouse effect, uh -huh. and reducing temperature extremes between day and night. Uh huh. 
These are some of the many protective functions of the sky. <sighs> the Quran asks us to <sighs> consider the sky in the following verse. Okay, which one? We made the sky a protective <gasps> ceiling, <sighs> and yet they are turning away from our signs. <sighs> I mean, I love those sounds. This guy sounds like somebody giving him like a, 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 a needle or something. What is what happened? Oh, 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 hold on. Let us get you busted, then and you, because you are a fraud and they are a fraud. If we go to the Quran and see the verse they are talking about, we will find that the Quran is speaking about the opposite. That it is us who can, cannot, cannot go out to the sky. The sky is a protected roof. It is not the earth have a roof protected. Just to show you how they fool you. <laughs> Just to be sure. What was the verse? What was the verse? Just to be sure that we are quoting the correct one. Let me let me zoom in because there's many verses speak about this this thing. So we can quote the same verse so they will not say, oh, he did not quote the same verse. It's very small to see. Hold on. Uh, yeah, 2132. Correct. 2132. Perfect. That's the one. All right. 2132. Here we go. 2132. Read with me carefully. And we made the heavens as canopy, well guarded. Who is guarded? The heaven. Do you see it? What is guarded? The heaven. Hmm? Now, I'm not going to talk about the verse before it because here the verse is stupid where it says that Allah, he put mountains in the top of the earth so the earth will not be shaky because Muhammad, he thought the earth is like a carpet and Allah, he put rocks in the top of it so this carpet will not fly. And you can read the interpretation about it, you will die laughing. Because according to the Quran, as you see, we have set on earth mountains standing firm. So mountains are not from the earth, they are rocks Allah he put them in the top of the earth but as long as this is our topic now about the heavens uh, uh, the sky protecting the earth let us see if this is true the Quran speak about how Allah protect and how Allah he made the roof if you go with a diff different verse by the way I mean there's many verses like as an example chapter 52 verse number 5 it says Allah he raised the sky as a canopy in the top of us okay but what is that sky and that what is that protected roof? Let us see. Muhammad, as all frauds, he have a lot of legions in his book. Chapter 15, verse number 18, speak and tell, tell us the answer for this question. According to Muhammad, the genies, they try to steal information from Allah. So Allah, he guarded the heaven. Do you see? Allah, he created this, the, the heaven. Read with me carefully. This is a chapter 15, verse number 16. It is we who have set the zodiacal sign in the heaven, and we made them fire seeming to all beholder. Okay. Fear seeming, sorry. So Allah, he created the stars for decoration. So we can see it. And this is stupid. Why? Because the stars we can see by our naked eyes is very little. And actually even the stars we can see with the most advanced telescope is still is very little because we can't see the whole universe anyway. And then he says, and we made, we guarded them. We guarded what? The heaven from every cursed shaitan, Satan. How? But what, what does that mean? Because they try to gain hearing and steal. So Allah, he pursued them by a flame of fire. Do you see it? So do you see how the verse was talking about that when shaitan, he tried to steal information or he fly out of the earth, Allah will shoot him in his ass. They made it about the atmosphere. Because as you see, the atmosphere in the Quran 
is where the stars are located based on this because this is the lowest heaven if you go to different verse in the Quran you will find the following <clears throat> Uh, chapter 36 sorry 37 uh, verse number 6 chapter 41 verse number 12 uh, 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 you know chapter 67 verse number 5 what is the lowest sky in the Islam is where the stars are located so that cannot be the atmosphere read it all those they are saying that correctly I mean clearly so we decorated the lower sky with stars the lower but based on that verse he's talking about he said that 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 one is speaking about the atmosphere but as you see the lower is heaven there is there is seven heaven in islam the lowest one is where is the stars according to the quran there is seven stars sorry seven heavens and seven earth have you ever heard of such a stupid thing chapter 2 verse number 29 it says it is he who uh, uh, who created for you all things that on earth and then he created seven heavens and he made them seven heavens do you see it he made them into seven heavens so now we have a verse saying that the lowest heaven is where is the stars are located so how the verse and the Quran suddenly became about the atmosphere huh uh, Hakim Ibrahim saying why you did insult George Floyd my friend George Floyd choose is better than your prophet we never insulted him you are a liar like your prophet get out of here get out of here my video is still there in my channel you scum back like your prophet you see how they try to lie I mean liars they are liars like their prophet when I insulted the guy you stupid liar filthy like your prophet you have no dignity I mean the Christian prince is alive and you are saying lies about me in my present here we go you brought an insult to your prophet the shoes of George Floyd is better than the most honorable prophet in Islam which is Muhammad his underwear is better than your prophet the guy is a poor guy is not a caravan rider he needed 20 dollars only you're a prophet he have 13 wives in his house 13 houses 13 wives and still he was riding caravan Arabian women and stealing money this guy is a poor guy trying to feed his family your prophet was riding caravans for what for he is a thief he's a fraud he kidnapped women George he didn't ever he never did that so the shoes of George Floyd is better than your prophet peace be upon him thank you very much now we go back to our topic it is he who has created for you all things and he made the sky seven seven sky and he in this place is where Allah he made the stars so do you see how they lie and they make it that the sky Allah he said the sky is a protected roof that's mean it is the atmosphere in other verse in the Quran it says that Allah he challenged the genie and the human being to leave the zone of the earth and if they do Allah will shoot their ass with the stars chapter 55 verse number 33 O assembly of jinn and men it be you can pass beyond the zone of the heaven and the earth pass ye not without authority and you shall not able to ask then you shall able to ask you ask the Muslim they say only angel of Allah and the prophets Muhammad he can pass anyone else if he try what will happen read carefully in the same Quran verse number 35 it says you will be sent all ye evil ones this is between two brackets not exist you will be sent they will send on you a flame of fire which is a star do you see it 
This is what is the protected sky is. Allah protect the sky, not the earth. It is us, we cannot leave the earth. You see how they lie? They make it the opposite. When the Quran is speaking about fiction and stupid story, that genie want to steal information from Allah. And by the way here, Allah got busted again because just two days ago, we have a spaceship left USA. Just two days ago. Allah challenging a human being and genie to pass out of the zone of the earth and the heaven. And now as we speak, we are, we have living people who they are in the spaceship, in the space. So how come Allah did not shoot them with the stars? And to make it more hilarious, in other verse, Muhammad, Allah, Aka Allah, he says. Chapter 67, verse number 5. And we decorated the lowest sky. How can see the lowest sky? They made the lowest sky in the in the video is the atmosphere, but the lowest sky skies is where the lamps is, the stars. And we made such lamps as missiles to drive away the evil ones. <laughs> Do you see it? So Muhammad the stupid, he's trying to describe why he is in the desert. He sees sometime some meteor falling down. So the stupid guy, Muhammad, he thought those are stars. And Allah is shooting this evil shaitan when he tried to go out of this disguise. So Allah, <laughs> scientific, very scientific, clear. So do you see how they fabricate? This is a book, they speak it, this is about science. I mean, how those people, how come they don't make a video about this? How come in their videos about science, here we go, this is about the sky, space, Star War. This is a Star War, literally. How come they never mention anything about those verses? Because the whole idea is deception and how to fool you. Let us go back to the video. So this one did not work. The second one is a stupid. And look at this guy's mouth. Ooh, ah, ooh, 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 ooh. What a fraud you are. Let us continue. Okay, so this is number two is a fraud. Number one is a fraud. Let us see, maybe number three would work. What is number three? Let us see number three. This is, did we pass number three? Hold on. I don't think so. Let us see. This is how we pass many actually. Uh -huh. Where is number three? Did I miss something? I don't want to play the whole video. These are some of the many protective functions of the sky. See? The lie. Quran asks us to consider the sky in the following verse. Oh. We made the sky a protective <gasps> ceiling, and yet they are turning away. See, even the verse, even the translation says, we made the sky protected ceiling. The sky, it is the protected ceiling, not the earth. You see? And if you go and read the interpretation of the Muslims, you will see they agree that this is about Shaitan try to go and Allah you don't allow the Shaitan to go to the heaven liars For sure Muhammad is a stupid because you know if he is not a stupid he, and I'm very thankful by the way that Muhammad is so stupid because that will make it harder on us to get him busted and look Muhammad is so stupid and still there is somebody Try to make Muhammad smart You see how that the, the devil is, uh, is the devil is supporting Muhammad in order to fool people. Let us see here this one. What this one? Earth as a resting place and the mountains as stakes. Oh. The Quran indicates that mountains have deep roots uh -huh. by using the word stakes to describe them. In fact, mountains do have deep roots and the word stakes is an accurate description for them. Uh -huh. A book titled Earth by geophysicist Frank Press explains that mountains are like stakes. Hmm. But you see, we just showed you that Allah, according to Islam, he placed mountains in the top of the earth. If we go in the Quran, we will see the following. <clears throat> oh boy. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, deception is is uh, is easy to get bust. But if you are naive and you don't have, uh, you know, 
uh, knowledge, uh, people they can fool you or, or you know very easy. Actually, already we showed you that Allah He claimed that He placed the mountains in the top of the earth, and the mountain has He firmly fixed. Okay, uh, if you read the the Quran, you will see how Allah created the earth here, which is chapter number seventy nine which is totally contradiction for a chapter 41 take notes chapter 41 it says that Allah created the earth and finished everything in the earth and then he went to the sky and then he made the stars chapter 41 is the opposite from 79 here Allah he created the sky and then he came to the earth and he made the earth flat and then you see the translation here it says he made the earth uh, uh, extended if you remember the muslims they say that the quran says that the earth is like a circle remember they say the word the haha the fact the word the haha is a flat they lie about the meaning of this word and they say it is circle if you go to the tafsir this is the chapter 79 verse number 30 <clears throat> all right My security is high. Give me a second. All right. Chapter 79, verse number 30. You go there, you will find the following. And remember, this is the Muslims explaining the verse, not me, because the Muslims, they might say, a oh, Christian prince is not being honest with you. Okay, this is their scholars, the highest scholars. This is why this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan. All right? So this is not a Christian prince saying that. This is the, this is them, you know. Okay, hold on. We, we chose the, the wrong verse, sorry. Chapter number, verse number 30. <clears throat> All right. Do you see it? Allah, he spread the earth and he made it flat. Do you see it? And it was created before the sky. <laughs> Do you see it? So according to Islam, the earth was created before the sky, which means all the fictions they say in their videos is stupid. It's a lie because according to science the earth was very young compared to the universe but in the Quran the earth was created before all the stars and all the sky do you see it is that a Christian Prince translation no is that a Christian Prince interpretation no as you see this is the official government website of the Kingdom of Jordan so they do their best to lie to you hoping that you are a fool so we can fool you good luck with that you see i'm trying to make the video short but it doesn't work this way oh okay uh about about the mountains you see when they say the mountain that allah created the mountains uh, they say no the mountain allah he says the mountain is autada autada it's a it have a root right the fact the, the word autada is not a root autada is a nail it's a nail you know the word autad is used for the nail you use i don't know what the, what the correct word in english uh when you when you have a tent and you want to fix the tent down you know what i mean i don't know what they call that one and you see the same word appear uh, many, many, many times in the Quran. Chapter 38, verse 12. Chapter 78, verse number 7. Chapter 89, verse number 10. If you click here, you will find the mountains as pages. And that alone is enough to explain that Islam is false because according to Quran, Allah, He dig the mountains in the ground. He fix it in the ground. When the fact the mountains are coming from inside the ground, not the opposite. You know what I mean? If you go right now and you search in Google how the mountains is, form, is formed, 
how the mountains is formed. Let us see. How mountains. And this is, have nothing to do with the Christian, Jewish, Hindu. I mean, you can search right now. I'm, I'm not even going to open any article. I mean, just to click at images in Google. And you will find they teach you how. I mean, this is something we learn in school. Even in the stupid Middle East schools. This is how the mountain forms. There is either a volcano from the pressure of the lava or the pressure of tectonic plates. So the earth is not a nail was put down in the ground. It is the opposite. Mountains are coming from the ground. In fact, their height increase. So do you see how stupid what they are saying? Because according to the Quran, and they are the one who says it is Autada, and they say it has a root. The fact the word root there is not exist. The word there, as you see, it's a nail. And that nail is something you push down in the earth, not coming from the earth. So Allah, he put nails in the, uh, 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 the mountains as nails. If you go in the Quran, you will find the following, just to confirm more. <clears throat> Do you guys, you hear any noise of a fan or anything? If there's a fan noise from your side, let me know, please. You see a translation here, it says has firmly fixed, but in fact in Arabic it says Arsaha. Arsaha mean he put it down. Let us change the translator. This is Yusuf Ali. Let us see a different translator. Go ahead. Let us see. Uh, which one we will choose? Karkut? What Karkut? Uh, this is Bos Bos Bosnia. Karkut. This is not the correct translation to it. You know what? Just to show you the correct meaning of this verse. Chapter 79, verse number 32. Let us go to the interpretation. This is the two verse after here. Just two verse. All right. Let us see what the Muslim scholars they say about. Here we go. Again, this thing. I mean, each time I want to open this website, my software give me a warning. Muslim website, what you can do. They think I am a terrorist now. Here we go. Read carefully with me. This is the Muslim's interpretation, not me. And has set firm the mountains on the face of the earth so that it stays still. So do you see the science of the Quran, how stupid it is? So the earth was created and in Allah, he created mountains as rocks and then he pushed it down in the earth and he, in the face of the earth, not down in the earth, in the face of the earth, so the earth will not move. It's in the front of you. Let us go to the, uh, to the uh, other miracle. This miracle is not working. It's a, it's a fraud, obviously. Maybe the second miracle will be good. Maybe you never know. I mean, we, we might get lucky. Tell us more. Uh, uh, do do let us move and see the one after what is the one after this one is one here expansion of the universe was described in Quran <clears throat> and it is we who have built the universe with our creative power and keep expanding <gasps> it. Oh. Ah. okay hold on 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 where it says we keep expanding it where where the word it because when you say it, you make it go back to the sky, right? The fact in Arabic it says wa inna limwasi'un did not say mention the sky at all. It said we build the sky, we build the heaven, we build everything, and we can't even do more. There's nowhere the word expand is exist. Let us see if this is true or not. 
I mean, how come the Islamic interpretation for the Quran does not match with those miracles? You know what I mean? Chapter 51, verse number 47. Do you, anyone see here? It says that Allah will expand the space. If you go to the interpretation, let us see the interpretation. Does it say Allah will expand the universe? And by the way, it is the Bible says, a Bible, a book written thousands of years, thousands of years before Muhammad exists, that God, he extend the heaven like a curtain. This is in our book. This is in our book. But nobody says oh, the, the Bible have a scientific miracle. Because we don't, you know, we don't believe in God because of science. It's in our book, but here nowhere it says what they are saying. All what the Quran is saying that Allah He can do more. Let us see the interpretation, chapter 51, verse number 47. And if there is a Muslim listening and he like me to put specific interpretation, I will be happy to put it. And you will see, he himself he will regret. Uh, each time I want to open this uh, website, it's going to give me this message. Hmm. Do you see, guys? What is the word expand? How come none of those Arab who speak Arabic very well saw that there is expanding for the universe? Do you see anywhere? Mean Allah is a strong. Do you see it? He can do more. He's a strong. There is no expand. There is no expansion. Nobody getting fat and nobody getting skinny and all of this is a lie. Hoping that because you do not know Arabic, we can fool you and you shake your head because dude, dude is shaking his head. Ooh, ah, oof, ah, wow. But as you say, this is their interpretation. Why the scholars did not see the word? Okay, how come in the Quran it says Allah will expand the heaven, yet those scholars, they did not notice. They don't speak good Arabic? Maybe they don't. You never know, brother. Maybe those are uh, not Arab, brother. Maybe they are explaining the Quran, but they are Hindus. Hmm? Anyway, let us go to the second part of this drama. <coughs> Or maybe the, those who made the interpretation for the Quran, they are Jewish, brother. Jews, brother, let us blame the Jews. Okay, tell us more. Let us move to the other one. What is next? The sun in orbit. In 1512, the astronomer Nicholas Copernicus. Put for Nicholas Copernicus. It's not a guy, his name is Abbas. It's Nicholas Copernicus. Always the one who discover things are not Muslims. Praise be to Allah. Okay, what this guy he noticed? Forward his theory that the sun is motionless at the center of the solar system and that the planets revolve around it. The belief that the sun is stationary was widespread amongst astronomers until the 20th century. It is now a well-established scientific fact that the sun is not stationary, but is moving in an orbit around the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Did he say around our Milky Way? So it's not around the Earth. Let him get. Him, let us get him busted. According to Muhammad, the sun it is the one who is moving around the Earth. Let us read together. And actually, he will quote the same verse he is quoting in his video, claiming that this is about a miracle, which is about how the sun have an orbit. All right. Let us see. First of all, Muhammad is the only scientist who discovered that the sun set in a murky water. And this is confirmed in the Quran in chapter 18, the cave chapter. I was sitting behind the messenger of Allah who was riding a donkey. By the way, at that time, Muhammad he used to go to the space riding donkey too. So at that time, donkey was a spaceship for Muhammad. While the sun was setting, he asked, do you know where, where this is set? Speaking about what the sun. I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. Muhammad, he liked the sentence. He asked people, do you know this? 
you have to answer him right away. He says, Allah and Muhammad knows best. It's like this guy, like, yeah, me. Yeah, I am the one who knows. He like he liked to make those statements so that he speak that he have is a prophet. He knew. And now Muhammad is giving us his pupil. He said, it's set in a spring of warm, muddy, hot, warm water. Do you see it? The Muslim, they speak about saying they discover that the sun going in the Milky Way, Milky, Milky Way when Muhammad describing the sunset as the following, the sun goes every day and take a shower in hot water and then appear in the morning. Not only that, the story is go even more hilarious. Uh, let us see. Here we go. Once I was behind the Prophet in a mosque, and by the way, there is there is a there is a, a nice a beautiful girl. She called me Habibi always. Her name is Fifi. Uh, uh, she said that this hadith is very accurate, so she cannot eat it. She said this is the correct hadith. They were answering an atheist. His name, the apostate Prophet. They says this is the correct hadith. Okay, let us see the correct hadith. I was behind the Prophet in the mosque. I was with the Prophet in the mosque at the time of the sunset. Obviously, in the like you know. Riding the donkey again, maybe. And Abu Dhar, uh, he, he said, Muhammad, he said to him, Do you know where the sun set? I replied, Allah and his apostle knows best as usual. He said, It goes and prostrate under Allah throne. But this guy, he just said, he's talking about what? About the sun set. This is something happening every 24 hours. The guy in the video, he's speaking about the earth, that the sun is not move like we are, we are going or moving around the sun but the sun itself is moving in the milky way according to muhammad the sun goes every day explain where the sun goes it is the sun who is moving not the earth is moving and then he quote the verses they are quoting in the video and that is the, st the statement of allah and the sun runs and it's a fixed course this is the orbit you see the orbit the orbit of the sun according to the Quran, the sun every day go and uh, sit under the throne of Allah. And take a nap. Do you see it? The funny, the Muslims, look, 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 look at the chat. I am showing them the hadith in the front of their eyes and they are saying to me, stop lying. Guys, can you believe it? Look, look, let me show you. I am showing them the hadith in the front of their eyes. And they say to me, look, this guy says, this is not hadith, this is interpretation. What, what do you mean interpretation? So oh, first of all, how come the interpretation of the scholars is different from the interpretation, inter interpretation of YouTuber? So now YouTuber guy who make a video is the one is solid for you and the scholars are not. And now we are showing you your prophet. Are you going to say your prophet he have wrong interpretation too? Obviously, a guy in YouTube he understand the Quran better than Muhammad. It's obvious. And now look at this guy Faruz. Stop lying, please. Uh, please stop being stupid, because you are just accusing now your prophet to be a liar. Because it is your prophet who said that, not me. You see, it says there the prophet said I was with the prophet. In the mosque, in the time of the sunset, the prophet said, the prophet said, not a Christian prince. So we showed them, the prophet said, they said to me, stop lying. Muhammad said, stop lying. It's, it's in front of you, stop lying. The other guy, he said, this is interpretation. Muhammad interpretation is not accepted. Muhammad interpretation is stupid. Muhammad, we don't follow Muhammad. We follow Fifi and Mimi. We Muslim, we don't follow prophet Muhammad. We follow Shish Kebab Hamas. Who's Muhammad? We never heard of him. Muhammad says that? We don't accept. <laughs> you see, can you believe it? They are following a kid in YouTube making false videos and they don't accept their prophet interpretation. Are you saying Muhammad was lying when he was saying this? Yes, he was lying. Obviously. Thank you very much for mentioning this. And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, so you cannot say this is Daif. Hmm? Daif. Hmm. Yeah. So, it's a fraud as usual. So, the, the, this one, number six, it turned to be uh, 
a fraud again. Let us continue. What is next? The sun have an orbit, right? The sun sleep in the, in the murky water every day. Number seven, the ocean. Let us see. Number seven, the ocean. Okay. Ooh, ooh. Tree to convey its deep meanings. Here it describes the state of the unbelievers as darkness out in a deep ocean, which is covered by waves, above which are waves, above which are clouds, uh -huh. layers of darkness, mm -hmm. one upon the other. Mm -hmm. When one puts out his hand therein, he can hardly see it. Those God gives no light to, they have no light. It is commonly oh. thought that the waves only occur on the surface of the ocean. Uh -huh. However, oceanographers have discovered that there are internal waves that take place below the surface of the ocean. Hmm. These waves are invisible to the human eye and can only be detected by specialist equipment. Oh. If, if, if. I mean, guys, this is a, just to show you how easy to get them busted with this one too, as usual. Did you notice that the verse he mentioned, it says... There's a dark cloud. Does it say that? If we are talking about the deep sea and the darkness in the deep sea, and you are not in the surface, then what the cloud is for? Because that will not affect. There's a cloud, there's no cloud. The dark sea is deep and it's dark. Even if it's the most sunny day, it is dark, correct? So, but here it says, and then above that, there's a cloud. So speaking about this, that crazy ocean, waves come in one after one, one over the other one, they never stop. And then there is a dark cloud, very tough, dark cloud to the point it became dark. The cloud is pre pre preventing the light. So we have a storm, we have an ocean, we have a crazy ocean, we have a crazy storm, and we have very dark cloud. And now it is dark. Do you see it? Guys, does it say there? Topped by dark cloud? So if this is about the deep sea and discovery, then what the dark cloud is about? Because the deep sea is always dark, regardless if it's night or daytime, regardless if it's sunny or it is a cloudy. So it is a lie. So this one is very, I mean, this is not even worse to talk about it. Always try, you know, when you read something, be vigilant, read carefully. Don't let them fool you. The Quran itself explain itself, showing you how stupid it is. Hey guys, look at the uh, Faroos. Faroos saying the Hadith written by a human. Well, isn't it the Quran written by a human too? <laughs> isn't it the Quran written by a human? Isn't this is supposed to be the Quran of Uthman? What is the Quran of Muhammad? Did Allah write the Quran? And by the way, this guy when he talked, he is the most funny idiot ever. According to the Quran, no Quran accepted except the one who Allah will collect. The Quran says, Inna alayna jam'uhu wa Qur'anahu. Chapter 75, verse number 17. It is on us to uh, recite the Quran and to collect the Quran who's speaking Allah so it is not for Muslims to collect the Quran it is not for Muslims to preserve the Quran it is not for Uthman it's not for Muhammad it is for Allah where is the Quran of Allah now what this guy will say oh this is written by human <laughs> do you see it the Quran says Allah will collect the Quran where is Allah collecting the Quran? Show me. You don't even have the Quran of Uthman. Let us continue with the video. So this one was silly and stupid. I think now we will arrive to Ice Ventura. Because all of you maybe you are wondering how the Quran is found in Ice Ventura. I mean, I try to make a video. Each time we go, you know, our internet go back. So now I, I change some setting in the software. I change software, I, you know. And uh, look like it's working. Thank God. We hope so. So let us move here. What is that? Ah, here we go. We arrived to Ice Ventura. Guys, you want to see what happened to Ice Ventura? Do you want to see how the Muslims, they discover Ice Ventura in the Quran? Read carefully. And listen carefully. How? how? Yeah. Oh, number <laughs> wow. Lying in movement. 
<sighs> there was a cruel, oppressive tribal leader named Abu Jahl who lived during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hmm. God revealed a verse of the Quran to warn him. No, indeed, if he does not stop, we will seize him by the forehead, his lying, sinful forehead. God does not call this person a liar. Guys, did, did you did you see? Let's just show you what he said. His sinful forehead. Did he say that in translate? Read, listen carefully. Listen carefully again. Named Abu Jahl, who lived during the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. God revealed a verse of the Quran to warn him. No, indeed, if he does not stop, we will seize him by the forehead. His lying. See. It says forehead, forehead, just to show you how those fraud they work. Nowhere in the Quran the words forehead is used. Nowhere in the Quran the word forehead is used. This is their fraud as usual. And this is why I decide to make the video named as Ice Ventura. Suddenly, Ice Ventura is in the Quran because the verse in the Quran is speak literally about little hair in the front of your head. Where is Ice Ventura picture? Let me get it. <laughs> Where is Ice Ventura? Hold on, Ice Ventura. Here we go. <clears throat> Eyes Ventura, brother. Do you see? Oh, hold on. Let me put the picture more clear for you. I know the screen is off, though. Don't complain. Take it easy. What the Quran speak about is the hair in the front this is how allah will grab him from there you cannot grab a human being from his forehead why it's a tail there's a handle there so you grab him from his hair how we can prove that this is what it says go all of you read the interpret read the verse just read the verse you will find that all translation does not say what he's saying in the in the video If we find that all the translation of the video of, of, of the Quran never said what they say in this video, the question why they are lying. You know what I mean? Why people who they are religious, when the Quran is speaking about this little tiny thing in the hair, in the front of your head, in case you have that hair there, you might be bold. This is what the Quran speak about. Nasiyah. Let us go to the Quran and see the, 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 the word. Give me a second. <laughs> I mean, I cannot believe it. How, how trashy, how low class. And how they try to fool you, hoping that you are a donkey. You know what donkey mean? Donkey is someone who don't want to go and check out what people say. Anything I say to you, I show in the screen. However, I advise you to go and check it out yourself. All right. So here in the translation, he said forehead. Let us go to the Quran. Right in the front of your eyes. And I will use only Muslim translation. Chapter 96, verse number 16. Let us see. What is the translation? For luck. For luck. What for luck mean? If you do not know what for luck mean, here we go. I will highlight. Search Google. All right. For luck. A lock of hair growing just above the forehead. <laughs> Suddenly, it's about the brain, about the head, about the front area of the brain. Where is memory and lying? 
It is the hair. It is the hair of Ice Ventura. Do you see it? This is what for luck is, especially if you are a donkey. <laughs> so th they made the hair is the brain. Just to say, brother, scientific miracle, brother. How the Quran you that? Huh? The Fairuz is saying how we can trust the website, you idiot. Who, who care about the website, you donkey? You are a certified donkey, Fairuz. Just don't take, don't come ever here again. You are a stupid. You stupid. Open your Quran. Don't trust the website. What's wrong with you? Are you a donkey or what? Open your Quran and read the verse. It says for luck. It's about the hair. Why here it's appearing the forehead? Can you explain to me? The funny, the Muslim, they say that the Bible is corrupted, but as you see, it's the Muslim who corrupt the Quran. No dignity. No honesty. Because now, by doing that, you are corrupting the Quran. If the Quran never say forehead, and you put the word there, forehead, that's mean you are corrupting your book. That's mean we cannot trust Muslims in anything. And actually, all this is about corruption. Because you are corrupting the meaning, corrupting the word, changing the words. So what, what was here suddenly became forehead. And why we do that unless we are doing it in purpose? There's no reason. There's no reason to do that unless you are a fraud. You know, maybe this guy translation is wrong, huh? We can change the translation, any translation you want. And you will see, it says that we can go to the interpretation. So all translation got you busted, all interpretation got you busted, and you are a liar. So instead of finding scientific miracle in the Quran as they claim, we found the hair of I, Ace Ventura sinful forehead God does not call this person a liar but calls his forehead the front part of the brain front part of the brain you see how the lie no dignity no honesty the hair became a brain the hair become the brain how in the world this religion can be from any anything can be good why they are lying? If we go right now to the interpretation, what we will find? It says the same. Chapter 96, verse number 16. No honesty, no dignity, no honesty in any way, in any way, you know? You cannot trust anyone he's a muslim teaching you about islam because they prove to us over and over that they are willing to lie just for the sake of gaining points read it it says his four luck do you see it who is saying that this is tafsir al-jalalain what about ibn kathir the same what about ibn abbas the same all of them they are the same i can show you i can switch to arabic and I can show you all the Islamic interpretation. You will find that even one of them says what they are saying. Which interpretation you want? Look how many, look how many, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Look how many. All of them, they are useless. In this, by the way, the, the page cannot go down. I mean, it's endless. All of them, they are saying the same. No dignity, no honesty. It's a fraud. The founder is a fraud, so the followers, they follow the founder. Otherwise, you need to ask yourself why they are fabricating something is not there. What the point? How a person who is religious, you see, when you say religious, somebody growing a beard, you think that this person, he is honest. Come on, he's religious, he fears God. 
He fear he'll go to hell. No, Muslims, they are being taught that it's okay to lie, especially if you are promoting Allah religion. This is a good lie for them. This is the cousin of Muhammad, who Muhammad chose him to inter give interpretation for the Quran. So my friends, I have a, you know, all of you, you have my book, you know, uh, Quran and Science in depth, right? I answer all this garbage and uh, deception of Allah, etc. If you have them, read them and you will die laughing. So what is a stupid in the Quran, they make it miracle because this is stupid. How the hair became liar, how the hair of a person became a liar. The guy obviously he have a nice hair and Muhammad is upset from his hair. He said his hair is lying to you. <laughs> but what hair have to do with the brain? Suddenly, suddenly what the Quran is saying is hair. Suddenly the, the brain of a human being is in the hair. No dignity, no honesty. You cannot trust them. You cannot listen to them. Never learn Islam from Muslims. This is my advice for everybody. I have my videos by thousands, English and for free. And they are translated to many languages. And actually soon I'm going to release a couple of books for free too. All right. Uh, you know, you know, all of you that's, uh, you know, we, we support ourselves by the books we make, right? However, I prefer to sacrifice very good amount of my income and reach to people who they need badly my books and this is what we did we gave our book to the Indonesian for free right so uh, I hope soon I will be able to release some translations in uh, uh, other languages so people they can read and for free even though uh, for for us all of us we need to make money this is how we make living you know if you go to the Gaza station you say Christian Prince, so you have to pay for gas, right? But it's more important to help people, especially who they are poor, who they cannot afford to read and to receive, to give them for free. And the Lord, at the end of the day, he, our, he is our provider, right? Thanks to all those who support us and they donate. I really appreciate them. And that's why, actually, I said to myself, you know what? The Lord, he provides always, and always he sends the good ones to help us. So, uh, I will be busy in this coming week maybe the week after we will have a good party and we will release those books for free all right uh, <clears throat> yeah you know I, I wish I can everything I do for free I mean what I can do but you know sometime at, at the end of the day you have to make living uh, and uh, uh, I mean everything around you if you go if you go to the store for five minutes to come back you spend a hundred dollar you know still i'm not complaining by the way because thank god everything is good i mean america is a cheap comparing to other countries you know not like europe europe is very expensive so god is good and you know the lord he is always our provider and i cannot complain never you know this is what i learned through my journey with life you struggle but always the lord he opened doors and actually, the more you struggle, the more doors open. This is my experience. The more you go through hard time, the more easier it gets. So the Lord is good, and God is good, and He is the one who always help us. Are you working in Quran translation? I'm working, but very slow. Because as you see, you see, guys, when I finish from here, you think I'm done? Questions. Can you talk to my son? Can you talk to my daughter? I have my husband is a Muslim. I have etc. I want to leave Islam, but my family. I mean, I have a lot of work under the air because most of those people they don't want to speak, you know, a life on air. Either they are scared or they are shy or etc. And I understand, you know, Islam is a scary cult. So uh, uh, people they need reference. I mean, if you if if you open my Skype, please don't send me message in Skype. I cannot read your message. One of the bad things about Skype, if you send me a message a year ago, it's not going to appear in the top. It's going to appear where it was a year ago. 
so I have thousands of messages and each one of you who think I saw the message it's impossible all right uh, Farouz the, the debate for me my friend who uh, Fifi I like Fifi she is very nice however why you don't ask Fifi to give me his Skype I will call him now <laughs> guys how many times we said we call anyone here we go. I'm here every day. I mean, do you dare to debate Fifi? If Fifi is scared from me, he's, he's, he's hiding. Where is, where is Fifi? Hey, give me Skype. I will call him. Fifi, Fifi, Mimi, Susu, I don't care. All of them, they are beautiful girls for me. Allah allowed me to have four of them. Actually, I like Fifi because he is the only one calling me Habibi. Which is disgusting. Habibi. <laughs> You feel sorry for Christians are brainwashed. You see Adnan. Uh, okay, hold on. Guys, Adnan, he says he feels sorry for the Christians. They are brainwashed by CPY. Did the Christian prince, he promised them heaven. And in the heaven, they will have endless penis like your prophet. I mean, you are talking about the brainwash. Actually, Adnan, you are not brainwashed. And there is no way we can brainwash you because you have no brain. Prove to me, Adnan, that you have a brain. How in the world a human being, he have a brain, he can believe in such a story that Allah will give you an English penis. What do you say, Adnan? A human being, he have a brain. He will believe in... So imagine, guys, Adnan is now in China. His penis in the Milky Way. And he's keep going. Here, Adnan, do you see your penis? A brother, I cannot see the end of it. Brother, I am afraid that your penis will go inside the sun and it's going to be barbecue such as this. <laughs> Endless penis. <laughs> one mile ass, one mile butt. And you are talking about brainwash. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He promised his followers one mile. What's wrong with half mile? Huh? And by the way, I like them two mile. Why only one mile? What's wrong with your God? Only one mile. I was, you know, hoping to open a resort in the top of her butt, like invite, like we do, we, we do uh, like sliding or uh, what, what they call it, this, uh, uh, this keyboard, you know, because it's very smooth, brother, one mile. What about 10 mile? It's not a verse, it's a hadith. Just look at this donkey. He don't even, he don't know even if it's a hadith or a verse. Yeah. Smart people. Are you there, Adnan? Do you have an answer, Adnan? Adnan, the Quran promised us women with big boobs. Guys, do you remember the guy who called me just yesterday? And he said to me, uh, nowhere in the hadith it says big boobs. So we showed him the Quran. He said, so what? The Quran promised us big boobs. <laughs> look, 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 look at this translation. Guys, look at this translation. This guy, he did not say big boobs. He said the swelling breast. Sw swelling breast. <laughs> That's a good translation. <laughs> swelling breast. <laughs> this will remind me of the hadith where uh, uh, Zainab, she said after Muhammad, he flirted with her in the house of her husband, which is the son of Muhammad by adoption. She said each time Zaid, he tried to have sex with me. Allah, he made his penis swell. <laughs> Ouch, that's hurt. <laughs> Thank God it's not me, her husband. You know, guys, imagine the prophet, he flirted with your wife. And now you want to go and sleep with your wife. And Allah will not let you do it. Don't even try to get close to her. Allah will close the door of the van over your penis. Why Allah, why are you close? Because I want to make your penis swell. How dare you to sleep with the women? The prophet, he flirted with her. But she is my wife. She is my wife, not his wife. I don't care. I'll curse you. I will make your penis swell. And then the guy, he go to the pharmacy and he is shy to say, can you please give me that uh, spidison for his, uh, his swelling penis the pharmacy guy he says do you have any swelling medicine for penis so all Quraysh now heard that the Zaid, Zaid penis is a swelling 
It, like the guy who go to the grocery store, he want to buy a condom secretly. Do you have condoms? Condoms? Yes, we have condoms. They are there in the shelf. <laughs> Adnan, are you there? <laughs> what a hilarious cut. Stupidity is amazing. Beyond the amazing, stupidity is amazing. And they are talking about brain brainwash. You, do you have a brain? Do you have a brain? Look, look at this. Cup overflowing. A cup? Cup of what? Unbelievable. Brother. So, the sound is good. Broadcast is good. Everything is good. Thank you, God. Look like it's working fine. I hope from now on it's going to be better. We did some tricks to fix it. Maybe it's working now. And we hope tomorrow will work. So guys, I'm going to stop here so you guys you can download the video and those who want to translate, you can translate. I want to say thank you for uh, being here. And uh, don't forget again to share, download, translate. For always, good work is needed. You don't know you are helping who when you translate a video to your language. Maybe your own family. Maybe a child from your family. Maybe a child from different family, from a place you but you save the soul from being fooled. For me, I'm sick of this cult. I don't even need to debate it. I mean, I can leave my finger in a in a room, have all the Muslims in the world, and my finger will scare the hell of them. And actually, this is what happened. This is why none of them he dared to call me. This is why all of them they want to say debate you face to face because they knew I don't show my face. This is the excuse. But all of us we know the reality that they are afraid to death. They cannot debate such a guy. For the answer would smash them. Like I was, before I go live, I went to David Wood. I was walking, you know, uh, uh, I, I, I like to walk every day. So I was walking, so I saw David Wood live, and they were talking about that the, the Muslim, they say is that Muhammad, he went with the army of 10,000. The fact it was 12,000. They are liars. Just to make it fit with the verse in the Bible. No dignity, no dignity, no honesty, no trustworthy. And that is telling us the story. If those who they are religious are a bunch of liars, so what about the one who they are not religious? Let me tell you that surprise. Muslims who they are not religious, they are way more honest than those Muslims who they are religious. I am speaking to you from experience. Always when I see a Muslim claim to be religious, I know the following, he lie, he steal, he fornicate, he do everything against the, 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 the ethic and nobody speak about ethic as they do. A Muslim who don't practice, he can be trustworthy, he can be a nice guy, he can be a peaceful person because simply the devil of Islam is not in his heart. So, we don't say all Muslims are evil. This is not true. For there is Muslims who follow Islam and they practice. And those are the ones you have to fear uh, 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 their lies. Because as you see, I never saw. Have you ever seen a Muslim who is re religious, who claim to be religious, speaking anything truthful? I never met one. I met Muslims who did don't care for Allah. They are very nice. They don't lie to me. You know, I, I, uh, we accompany, I accompany many of them many times. They accompany me. I have no problem with them. But I cannot trust a religious person. Because a religious right away, he practiced taqiyya, which is the Quran teaching, chapter 3, verse number 28, that you can speak to them in a friendly way, but your heart is not like that. Right? Uh, Adnan, guys, just to show you uh, why, why Islam is a stupid. If Islam is not a stupid, why Muslims are not smart? I challenge you, CP, prove the Bible is not corrupt. Uh, uh, Adnan, just look, listen, my friend. You just proved to me that Islam is a lie. Why? Because the Quran says that Allah is the one who sent the Injil. So what, uh, what Adnan is saying to us, that the book of Allah is corrupt. So what Adnan proven to us that Allah 
he got a big nail in his bum. He sent the Torah, he sent the Injil, and this God, nobody cared for him and they screwed him. This is what you are saying to us. Because chapter 3, verse number 3, and there's tons of verses in the Quran saying that it's Allah who sent down the Gospel and the Torah. And Adnan is saying to us, the Torah of Allah and the Gospel of Allah is corrupted. So what's my problem? Do you understand? Guys, do you understand? Usually Muslim, by the way, when they say this sentence, Christian, they go into defense, right? You defend. They say, no, it's not corrupt. No, don't, 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 don't defend. He's speaking about his Quran, speaking about his Bible, speaking about the Torah of Allah, the Gospel of Allah. For us, we don't believe Allah sent anything. So what he is saying to you, that the book which Allah sent is corrupt. So what's my problem? Thank you very much. You just give us additional proof that Allah cannot be God. No, you do not need to prove it. Here we go. You know, agree. The Bible of Allah is corrupt because Allah is corrupt. How you can corrupt the book of God unless he is a fake God? Correct, guys? As long as the Quran agree and admit with you that it is the one who sent the Torah and the gospel is Allah. And then you say to me, you want to prove to me that the Torah of Allah is corrupt. I do not need to debate me. I agree. Everything about Allah is corrupt. That to prove that Allah cannot be God. Okay, you know what, Adnan? Just to show you, I will go with you. Guys, we have a guy here. His name is Adnan. He can prove to us that the Torah and the Gospel are corrupt. Look what happened, Adnan. Just to show you that you are a really wonderful person. Super intelligent. If the Torah and the Gospel is corrupted, then how your stupid God, he say to us, you have to follow it. <laughs> In the time of Muhammad. Chapter 5, verse number 68, and other verses, saying, O Christians, O Jews, you have nothing to stand upon unless you follow the Torah and the Gospel. Okay, so... I want to follow the Torah and the Gospel where it is. The Quran at that time is speaking about the book they have in their hand. This is 600 years after Jesus. Allah asking the Christians to follow the Torah and the Gospel. And this is the same book we have right now. So your God Allah is a stupid then. Not only that. No screen? Oh, sorry guys. I apologize. Do you see it? Chapter 5, verse number 68. Same time, as long the Torah and the Gospel are corrupt. So how come Muhammad, he say this? Take an oath. Let us see the Hadith. All right. Because remember, Adnan, he can prove to us that the Torah and the Gospel is corrupted. Where is the Hadith? This website is horrible. Hold on. Here we go. You're a prophet. He told them, bring me the Torah. And he put it in a cushion. He said, Muhammad said, bring the Torah. They brought the, they brought the Torah for him. And then he would draw the cushion from underneath of him. Look, he's, he's treating the Torah with a lot of respect in the front of the Jews. He's a hypocrite. And he placed the Torah on it, saying, I believe in thee and in him who revealed thee. 
but Adnan, he have all the proofs to prove that the gospel and the Torah are corrupt. But Muhammad, he swears saying, I believe in thee. So do you see how stupid Muhammad is? Because Adnan is smart, Muhammad is not. You see guys, Adnan, he got Muhammad busted because obviously Muhammad is a fraud taking oath on a false book. Because if this book is corrupt, how you swear by it and say, I believe in thee? You understand what I'm saying? Are you there, Adnan? Still, are you still alive? Adnan, are you there? How your prophet swear by the Torah if the Torah is corrupt and you have the proof? And he say, I believe in thee. So he was believing in the corrupt Torah. Hello? Adnan, are you there? Adnan, he took a jibni. He went all the way to the Philippines. Can you give me the hadith about corruption? I can give you a hadith about the corruption. No problem. My friend, you just supported my point. Guys, hold on. Look how Adnan, he helped us. Can, I can give you a hadith about the corruption of the Bible. Wonderful. So the hadith confirm, according to the hadith you have, that the Bible was corrupted. Okay. And Muhammad swear by the corrupted Bible. <laughs> So now Muhammad have no excuse to say, I do not know that this book is corrupted. Correct, guys? That's mean officially your prophet is a big fat fraud. Because if you give me the Torah, I believe in this book. I say, I believe in thee. But if you give me the Quran, I say, I'm going to spit on thee. You see, Adnan, I am not a prophet. But I will not sell myself to the devil. So if you give me the Quran, I say I spit in thee and the one who sent thee. If you give me the Torah, I say I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. So how Muhammad, he took the corrupt Torah, as you said, and he is swearing by thee. The answer is very simple. Those who swear by false book, they must be false men. Correct, guys? If you give me the book of the Mormon, I will not say I believe in thee. If you give me uh, even Jehovah's Witnesses, I will not say I believe in thee because it's a corrupt translation. If you give me the Quran, I say I spit on thee. This is the book of the devil, obviously. Right? If I lose, just go. We need, we need three people. The Quran is confirmed, the original gospel of Jesus Christ. Not for Gospels? Ah, okay. Okay, hold on, guys. Hold on. Just to show just to show you. You see, Adnan is changing the topic now. You know this? Do you know this? When you grab them from the tail, they change the topic right away. Adnan, I will go with you. The Quran confirmed the Gospel, but he did not say there are four, right? Okay. But your prophet, he says you have to have four Gospels too. Can you tell me why? If it should be one, why Muhammad he says take the Quran from four? Are those Mark and Luke and John? But what? Why four? If we have one Quran and we should not have four writers, then why your prophet he says take the Quran from four? Do you have an answer? And none of them is Uthman. Where is Uthman? Do you see Uthman there? Why you are taking the Quran of Uthman? Did he say uh, Hafs, which came 200 years after Muhammad? Very stupid story. Secondly, when you say that the Quran confirmed the Bible which sent to Isa, that is very nice of you to say. Because you just admitted that in the time of Muhammad, the Bible was co was confirmed to be true. But this is the same Bible we have today. And in the Quran, proof of that, the Quran says that the Christian, they say that Jesus is the son of God. Yes, did he just say that the Quran confirmed the book was sent to Isa? But when? At this time, at the time of Muhammad. The Quran says that the Christians, 
They believe that Jesus is Son of God <laughs> at that time. <laughs> so from the time of Muhammad until now, nothing changed for the Christians. So how the Quran says, I confirm what you have between your hands. Just go, just go. And I don't have time for kids. You know, just go. Get lost. I have no time for kids. Bring me a sheikh, you know, bring me someone he have a value of his words. You know, a bunch of kids, potatoes. I just I just told you, you just admitted that the Quran saying that the Torah and the gospel sent by Allah, and you are saying to me that the Torah of Allah is corrupted. You made me fart, I laugh, I agree. The Quran the Torah of Allah is corrupt. Because Allah is corrupt. So you're debating me about what you donkey? You debate me about what? You are trying to prove to me, you are trying to debate me, to prove to me the book of your God is corrupt. You are stupid. I agree, all your, all your God books are corrupt. <laughs> you know what I mean? There is no need to debate. There is no need to, those people are crazy. They are working hard to prove to us that Allah is a fraud. Allah, he sent books, but he cannot preserve. Okay, well, if he cannot preserve his book, he can preserve what? You know what I mean? I am responsible for my book. You see, God preserve his book. For a human being die, and a human being commit sin, and a human being can be corrupt. So if you are saying to me that your God, he sent 124,000 books with 124,000 messengers, and you have only one book is not corrupted, and then we find that this book has been eaten by the goat. And there's more than 900 reading of the Quran. And where are they? This is the preserved Quran. And you know what makes me really upset that this goat, from all the books she did not choose except the 10 time breastfeeding for adults. This is the only reason for me to convince me to convert to Islam. I will convert like just for a few years to practice breastfeeding for adult. I will spend my life going between Morocco, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, etc. And practice Islam, breastfeeding for adult. I go to the houses. Hello, it's me you are looking for. Can I do breastfeeding for your wife? And because this is Islam teaching, brother, your wife, she will take off her breast and she will deliver them to me, boom. And I'm hungry. I'm single for a long time. You can imagine what will happen when they give it to me. Like, this is real? Those are really breasts, brother? Yes, brother, this is my wife. Feel free, brother. 10 times, brother. 10 times for free. If you do it at November 11, we charge you, brother. This is religion. And you are talking about the Bible is corrupt. Look at this garbage. Ten time for adult breastfeeding. I mean, do you even have a brain? And the funny they speak about brainwash. You guys are brainwashed by me. Why did I say to those people who they are here? If you believe in Christian prayers. I'm not a prophet. I'm no one. I'm not even a priest. I am a guy. When I walk, I, I carry my gun with me. What? Uh, I never said I'm a priest. I never said I am an angel. I never said, you know. Uh, what? Brainwash work. I'm showing you reference. I'm, I'm teaching people here the truth. I don't have. I am not a church leader. I am. I never said I'm a prophet. I never said even I am a, a perfect guy. I never said anything. You don't even know who I am. But we have a prophet who claimed to be a prophet who have ethic. And his ethic is teaching him that a Muslim woman, she should give her breast for an adult to suckle it. <clears throat> a static saying by year 2011, Muslim will pass. Christian population no my friend all those static are funny and dummy you see those static like they say 
there is 1.6 billion. This is absolutely a lie. They count even the Christians are Muslims in those countries. You know what I mean? Like they, they count Ethiopia. Ethiopia more than the half is a Christian. Sudan, you know, any uh, the Christian in Indonesia, they count all the country as, as Muslims. So those those accounts are uh, or numbers are false. Secondly, the numbers of Muslims is the reason for Islam to collapse, not the opposite. And I'll explain to you how. You see, some countries, they are trying to practice Sharia law. Like, there is a new wave in Indonesia, right? But that is making more people hate this God. So, Indonesia is the biggest Islamic country in the world. If you see how many people leave Islam, you will not believe it. If you see how many of the Muslims they hate to practice Islam, you will not believe it. Big numbers is not going to enforce Islam, it's going to do the opposite. Because society will be poor, they have big number, no enough jobs, no enough money, no enough resource, no enough ed education. And those people who they are, you're trying to make them Muslim supposedly, so to say we have a population, what you can do with them? What is their power? What is their? Let us say Indonesia is a 300 million population next to Israel, and they go in war. Which one is going to win? Israel of seven millions. All of us we knew Israel will win. So first of all, population is can be a curse on you, not a blessing, because if you cannot feed your population, that will not help you. Bangladesh, the second big populated country. Of Muslims if we take those countries from the population we will see Islam disappear where is where is the rest of Muslims if you go to Bangladesh you will not you will not believe it I mean I feel sorry for them so what population they are talking about what that mean what that would do I want to go there actually because I want to I want to use a train there you know at least once I like this train by the way I mean I think this is my favorite train here we go this is the second country in the world of Muslims this is Bangladesh hmm? so You know what I mean? This country need to reduce their population so they can solve their problem. So having a huge population can be a curse. Crimes, rape, disgusting crimes. Because people, they can survive. Look at this. I mean, imagine you live there. Thank God. Thank you, God. I don't live there. I, I'm not putting people down, by the way. I mean, they are poor people. I'm not making fun of them. But thank God I don't live there. So, you have the population, okay, what this population will do to you? You will control the world with it? No, it's useless. You can't even feed them. You know what I mean? So, when they speak about numbers, I laugh. I really laugh. Christians in Muslim countries are 10%, 15%, 20%. But they are the quality. So having popula big population and you cannot feed them, that is not really a blessing for you. That is a curse. You are born there. You will not have a job. You cannot feed your kids. And there is no education there is no health i mean what health look at this look at this look look what's happening now in corona like you know i saw a muslim saying do you know how big uh, uh, corona happened in usa my friend in usa if somebody fought you see it in the news nothing is hiding but in islamic countries people are dying by tens of thousands but nobody speak about it first because nobody care from the from the world media in america anything happened look 
uh, a poor guy he died the whole world talking about why because this is America but look at Bangladesh nobody talk about them the head of Taliban is dying because of corona corona is eating Iran corona is eating Egypt corona is eating Islamic countries like crazy but the but the world focus in those who have the power and those who they are worthy and rich they don't focus on those poor people so now you have corona what this population would do nothing you know actually if those people they, in there they were poor christian i will advise them to do be careful about how many children they have we don't approve abortion never do abortion never never this is a crime but still you can control how many babies you can have so if they are seeking increase of population that is against them and that will control uh, uh, will do the opposite you see uh, uh, Africa used to be majority Muslims the Muslims invade big part of Africa but now the Muslims are existing in certain areas in Africa and the number of Christians is really big compared to before. A huge conversion happened because Islam did not bring education. Islam did not bring anything convincing. Islam did bring four wives and justice, kids in the street. I saw a Christian child in the Middle East washing the windows or shoes in the street. The one who do that is Muslim children. Why? He don't even afford to have a sandwich. He go and have a wife, second wife, third wife, and every two days they have a, a new baby. And then he cannot feed them. And then he send them in the street either to beg for money or to wash windows. That is reality. So those numbers, they don't count for me, and they mean nothing. And if you know how we knew how many Muslims between those people there? How you can calculate that everybody there is Muslim? Can we calculate all of America Christian? No, no, that's not true. Mexico, one, you know, in, in South America, Brazil. I mean, what numbers mean? Number is number is a city city game. One Mexican woman, she can have more kids than all Muslim women in in in, in the Middle East. But that will not make a you know a good thing what population i mean this is silly you see the days where people maybe they need a big army to conquer other nation by population it, it's over you know what i mean like let us say they became 10 billions still you cannot fight america Your girlfriend is a Muslim. My friend, if your girlfriend is a Muslim, that means she is not a Muslim. Secondly, if you are a Christian, you should not have a girlfriend. Don't change the topic. I change you to prove that the Bible is not corrupt. My friend, you see, I just, uh, I just, you proved me wrong. I, I, you know, I told you the Bible of Allah is corrupt. Get lost. We are laughing. A clear evidence that Muslims, they are following the false God. They prove to us that the Bible of Allah is corrupt. Okay. What's my business? Why you are asking me to debate me about a book your God sent? You are stupid. You Muslims should debate about that. You Muslims should debate about because both of you believe in the same book. Allah sent the Torah. Who believe in that? Not me. So you want to prove to me that the book of Allah is corrupt. So why you are debating me? You are debating the wrong person. You know what I mean? Do we have any Abdul have any comment? Anyone additional to this kid? never debate with muslims about bible being corrupt if a muslim he says to you the bible is corrupt say okay the bible of allah is corrupt thank you very much that is additional reason for me not to follow allah for if allah is god nobody can corrupt his book thank you very much all right 
Gun one. Okay, my friend. So you decide to leave Islam? All right. Do you like to call us Gun one? If you like to speak live on air, we'll be happy to hear you to see that, you know, you decide to leave Islam. Here we go. Gun one. I don't know where Gun one from. Uh, thanks, CP. I am 56 years old. You have opened my eyes. My I don't open your eyes, my friend. God help us. God use us. And the truth will set you free, not me. Uh, and I leave Islam. That's wonderful. I'm happy for you. But I would like to invite you to accept the Messiah, my friend. Leaving Islam is not enough for me. There is something we still we need to accomplish. Because leaving a cult and still we are not living the truth, that will not really be a good thing at the end of the day. So if you need help, I will be happy to help you. So may the Lord he have you in his heaven and you join his kingdom. Let me know if you need any help. I will be happy to help you. You know, whatever they say, whatever the Muslim they say, I find that there is nothing comforting as the Messiah. All the garbage they come with. Your book is corrupt, etc. Can you corrupt the miracles of Jesus? You cannot. The Quran agree and admit that Jesus resurrect people from death. The Quran agree that Jesus make the blind see. He can even tell you what you hide in your houses. The Quran agree that Jesus right now is living in heaven. This is all is act of God. You want to claim that this is from Allah Prophet. Your Allah could not make Muhammad alive. Your Allah could not make the blind see. Your Allah could not make the leper healed. Your Allah, even Muhammad died from poison and he could not heal him. So you can say all the lies you want. But in your book, you have to admit that Jesus is a unique person, which even your God cannot be a competition with him. If we ask a Muslim, where is Jesus now? He will say in heaven. Thank you very much. <laughs> right? Everybody is dead as dust. I will be dead. He will be dead. And then maybe we will be remembered by people one day. Maybe we will be not. But the Messiah, the one you are talking about, you idiot, is right now in heaven listening to us. We are talking about the living Messiah. So look at this madness. Those people believe that the Messiah is alive for thousands of years. And God knows for how long, according to the religion, Jesus will be alive. And then he will come back. And you know, the funny is that who is the one who will complete the story? Jesus. Who is the one who will overcome the devil? Jesus. Who is the one who will kill the devil? Jesus. So who is the hero? Muhammad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to show you the stupidity of this religion. Who is the one who is going to bring victory in the day of judgment? They say uh, Isa. Supposedly Jesus. Who is the one who will destroy the Antichrist? Jesus. Who is the one when the Antichrist and the Shaitan, he see him, he melt as salt dissolve in water? Isa. Okay, who is the most powerful prophet? They say Muhammad. <laughs> Isn't it amazing? I mean, I never saw stupidity, hypocrisy, madness, corruption as this religion. How you are saying to me that he is the one? Okay, so now we are watching a movie. Huh? Let us forget about Isa and Muhammad. A movie, action movie. Everybody die except Sylvester Stallone. Who is the hero? Muhammad. Muhammad die. He is the hero. <laughs> but, here, but who is the one who killed the mafia? Sylvester Stallone. Who is the hero? Muhammad. Who is the one who killed the devil? Isa. So do you see how easy to defeat this cult? You know, the problem is that we usually, we don't think deeply. We need to practice something is called deep thinking. Most of us, we don't do that. You see, I believe that most of you, you are not shallow, but you are not practicing deep thinking. 
You see, life, if you, if you go right now in front of your house, I don't know if it's day or night. If it's night, you see stars. If it's day, you see the light, you see the blue sky. But you have to make reasoning for things around you in order to recognize where are you, what you belong to, what do you see. If I am a shallow person, I see things, but I don't think about it. They are there. Same things are there. You will notice that we might go, let us say all of us, we are in one room. And then all of us, we have a picture in front of us. And then somebody come and he says, I will give you pen and paper. And I want each one of you to describe this picture to you, which is all of you, you see it in the wall. There's a picture there. You will find that it's one of us, he have a lot more details for the same pictures. And some of us, they have very little details. But it's the same picture. Go 101, he believe in Jesus. That's wonderful, my friend. I'm so happy for you. Glory to the Lord. I'm happy for you. The Lord, he said that the happiness in, the, in his kingdom will be for one saved soul. So that's wonderful. I'm ha really happy for you. I hope your family will follow you too. So the reason that one of us, he have more, let us say, he notice more items in the same pictures because he is more deep thinker. Many of us, we see the same image, but we don't notice what is in the image. So in order for me to learn about noticing, I need to think, practice. We need to be people who always think about things exist around us. Like when the Muslim, he says to us that uh, the Bible is corrupt. And then he says to us that the Bible is sent by Allah. I mean, this is the most stupid statement ever because you are accusing me. You are accusing your God. You know what I mean? Always there is people who leave Islam. I receive messages always. You know, I speak to people and they're like in their ear. Uh, but at the end of the day, my friend, maybe we are happy for you. Many are happy for you. But you are the one who is the, let us say, uh, the one who received the gift because you are the one is saved. This is your salvation. I got nothing from it. If this gentleman, he became a Christian or he did not, this is, I mean, what I will lose. You see, if the whole world did not believe in Christ, Okay, what Christ will lose? Nothing. You do nothing. You, you, you know, you, God, God, he gained nothing by believing in him. Our God, because he is a loving God, he wants us to be saved. As simple as that. It's not about him gaining anything. You believe, you don't believe, it's up to you. <clears throat> no, we believe that the Bible of Allah is corrupt, for Allah is a fraud. And we answer you about that. Get lost again. The Messiah said that the earth and the heaven will be destroyed and my words will not. You are a fraud like your prophet. A true believer in a true God, he will never even say that his God, he sent a book and his book is destroyed. That is a shame. And because you people have no shame, you say such a statement against your God, not against my God. For you believe that this book is sent by your God. And then you say that the book sent by your God is corrupt. That means you are accusing your God to be a false God. A Sunni Muslim, he said, we don't accept, the Muslim don't accept muta. It's a lie. You see, the Muslim, if you have my book, Six and Allah, you will find that the Muslim Sunni, they just replace the name of the muta. They have other muta. As an example, Zawaj friend, uh, Messiar. Uh, Orfi. The so wife friend is you have a friend, it's like a girlfriend, and you want to sleep together, but you don't want to live together. So what do you do? You agree every few days or one week or two weeks, go to the hotel, sleep together, and then she go home and you go home. <laughs> they do muta, and you have to give her money still. Yeah. So first of all, the muta is in the Quran. Have nothing to do with Shia or Sunni. The Muslim Sunni they claim that the mut'a is abrogated. Where is the verse of abrogation? Show us. 
They say it's in the hadith, but we have hadith, which is strong hadith saying that the mut'a practiced by Muhammad and by the caliphate who came after him. Uh, Ganwan, he want to call me. Okay. Uh, maybe maybe tomorrow, Ganwan. You know, I'm, I'm really happy for you. Uh, but, I, you know, I don't, I don't want people to, to think that, you know, we make people call us to say I became a Christian and etc. You know, we don't do what the Muslims do. But maybe you can call me some other time. And if you wish to have, if you have anything to say, I will be happy. All right. Do we have any Muslim here? Uh, do we have any Ustad here? Any Ustad? Well, my Skype is not open, and I don't really feel like taking any call right now. Do we have any Ustad? I mean, if the person here accepted the Christ, we are happy for you, that's it. His call will not make any difference. Uh, assassin and Islam is very interesting topic well the word assassin is coming from uh, a person his name is Hassan al-Hashash Hassan al-Hashash uh, his real name actually is not al-Hashash Hashash is a let us say a title Hashash coming from the word Hashish uh, this person he uh, in the beginning, he started the castle, and this castle is a rich man for sure. He brings young men. He have a lot of female slaves for sex. They drink, they dance, you know. And then after they all of this, every day in the morning, he do like a, a teaching for them. So he teach them that the Quran have out and inside, inner and outside. For them, they believe in the inside meaning, not the outside meaning. Which means any, whatever he want to give interpretation for the Quran. So those, they call them the batunin, which means the stomach. Let us say, the stomach of the Quran, what is inside the Quran. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, so this guy, he start uh, bringing those young kids. He teach them. Uh, and they get a drunk, they have sex. They stay in his castle for almost a year. And then he grab you, he says, come here. I have to send you an mission. If you want to come back here, you have to go and kill that prince or that rich man. He sent letter to very important people who they are extremely rich, saying to them, pay or die. And those kids, young men, they are uh, taking hashish, having free sex, free food. It's like a fancy life, you know, it's like having... You live in a hotel, five stars hotels at that time, and you live there, unlimited food, unlimited drink, beautiful women, sex all day if you want. So when he says to you, you will not come back unless you kill that guy, you will not come back unless you kill that guy. And this is where the story of the assassin is coming from. All right. The assassin is coming from this guy. And by the way, this guy, he have, you know, he start with one castle and then he control a huge area all the way from Persia, all the way through Iraq, and then all the way to the, uh, to the seaside of Syria. He became a very powerful man. All kings at, his, at that his time, he, they fear him because he can kill you, you know. He have like, it's like suicide bombers now, you know, pay us. The same as Yasser Arafat in his time. Yasser Arafat, he, uh, his, his, his living business was when uh, he started his business as a terrorist, they kidnap airplanes. And European, because they are, they are, I mean, European government are very stupid. Their airport is very easy to betrayed. They don't check, there is no security. They ask you for a passport and you go whatever in your back. So the Yas Arafat, every almost every week there's a new kidnapped airplane. Go back in history, read some documentary. 
and in order to not to kill your passengers, give us three hundred dollars, three hundred million dollars, two hundred million dollars. So they became he became very filthy rich in a very short time. The same as the pirate now, the pirate in Somalia. They don't have education, they don't even have high school. Very, very, very good business for them. A ship going by in the sea, they hijack it. You will not give you your cargo and your ship and your, your team unless you pay us two hundred million dollars. It takes them two hours of job. You know? This is what always happened there. But all of them they are religious and all of them they are serving God. Same as Muhammad. Muhammad was the biggest thief, caravan rider. Right? Yeah, Yasser Arafat is a big thief, you know, he's a big thief, officially thief. And this is how funny the world, you know, a thief, he, they make him a hero. Even European Union, it's stupid. I mean, it's, European government is the most stupid government. I never saw a European, like very few, European president or prime minister, he knew actually what's happening in this earth. I tried, but all from Muslim version. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, some of them, they are in Kindle. I, I'm going to publish uh, two books soon in uh, Portuguese language, uh, Quran and Science, and uh, The Deception of Allah. Then maybe maybe two months after we can have six and Allah published too. And when I start having more time, I'm going to you know you know like uh, able to finish because I'm working more not only one book at a time. You know this is what I do when I write my books. If you write in one topic, sometimes like you know writing is not easy. Writing is like you need let us say inspiration. You need uh, like the ideas coming to your head. So you sit and write. you cannot force yourself to write. You know what I mean? Uh, and uh, my experience is, as long as I'm going live on air, like now, if I finish, I will not find myself in the mood of writing anything. Uh, it takes a lot of your energy and a lot of your, let us say, comfort. Anyway, guys, uh, uh, remember all, always one thing anyone he say to you anything even if he's a Christian don't take what people they say to you for granted and I tell you that this is a very good advice because if you take what people say to you including me that's mean you decide not to think you decide not to study you decide to be lazy. And what if the person who is saying to you something, he's wrong? You know what I mean? What if the information is not right? But if you study the information and he was telling the truth, that will make you very strong. In a very strong ground because you spend good time studying taking notes educating yourself and whatever you learn from someone like me or anyone else that will help you to make it easier you know what i mean does the quran challenge challenge contradict the last ayah of the Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm not sure what you mean, but uh, uh, all the Quran is a contradiction. You cannot find one verse in the Quran of a contradiction. Just take notes, and you will find easy that it's all of it is contradiction, right? Yeah, you know when I was a kid. When I was a kid. I, I'm very active person. I mean, I don't really. Uh, I'm not like a lazy person who like to sit and etc. 
So I'm very active as a kid, but I love reading. So how I can be active and read at the same time? I used to walk almost like an hour far away from my house where there's a library. When we have summer vacation, school vacation, you know, as a kid, every day I walk almost an hour to go, an hour to come back. And I cannot ask anyone to give me a ride because my family will never approve me to go alone to such a place or sit alone there. So I go walk all the way to a library and then when I will go inside the library, there is a section for kids have Mickey Mouse, stupid stuff. I don't want to read this. I want to read something important. So I, you know, I, uh, uh, there's a section for adult and they will not allow kids to get in. So what I do when an adult is walking to get in, I walk next to him. I act as if I am his kid. I walk just next to him and the guy will be looking at me like, why this kid is like walking with me, you know, but he cannot see anything. So he get inside the big hall where the big books are and I walk with him as if I am with him. Then I go and I keep walking with him until he sit in the table. I sit next to him and the, kid, the guy will be looking at me like, what this kid is doing? You know, why are you sitting there? And then because I am not allowed to grab books, I grab book in the table because people, they finish reading, they leave the book in the table. Any book in the table, I grab it. And I start reading books. I have no idea what they are about. I remember once when I was a kid, uh, I grab a book, it was about sex. I was getting dizzy, like, what is this? <laughs> I grab a book in front of me, and it was talking about sex, you know, like, uh, it's a scientific book. So, uh, reading, reading is a process of education, and it's not something happening in school. It is something happened by you schooling yourself. So in order to learn, you need to work in that learning. If you are a person who likes just to receive and learn easy, that can be true. And maybe you get lucky that you are learning from somebody is a tr trustworthy. But what if the person, he is a liar, he's a thief, he is fooling you. And even if the person is trustworthy, you have to fix the information in your brain. How? By checking it out. What type of library? No, it's actually a wonderful library. They have all kinds of books. What's wrong? I mean, if you have a book about sex, is that is that bad? It's a book about, uh, you know, sexuality. See, books about such a topic is not bad. You know, studying a human being behavior, uh, those are not you know sex is not bad it is what we do with, with sex what is sex for us God he created sex for a reason it's not it did not happen that we are attracted to sexuality so nothing wrong with, with, with that but we are not talking about Playboy magazine we're talking about scientific book Uh, <laughs> yeah, but you know, scientific journal these days, sadly, uh, they are kind of uh, uh, copy paste. You know, very few people they do scientific study, whatever the topic. You know, because science can be in, even about history. But uh, those journal, uh, as I notice, that people are not really doing real studies as much it is. Uh, searching patterns, you know patterns? I'm sure you know, it looks like you know the topic. It's like, you know, uh, like Darwin. Darwin is not a scientist. Uh, Darwin is an observer. So he was trying to observe things around him and from his observation, he tried to make conclusion. And most likely his conclusion is wrong. So there is people who they make real search and there is people who try to copy other people's search. And there is people who do their own preservation observation. And they come with their own, like they say, they discover such a kind of pattern happen or repeated pattern. And they say, this is science. But the fact, this is not really science. 
uh, respond to my comment. I don't see your comment. <clears throat> yeah, you know, people, they, uh, like now, you see, is our science collapse with corona. Suddenly, all the scientists we have, they cannot even find out how this virus work. And this is telling you that it is a science of patterns, not science of knowledge. So what they do, they try to study the pattern of the virus behavior. You know what I mean? It's observation science, which means it's not really a science. It's just like watching how the rabbit jump. And then we learn that the rabbit, he jumped like this. And then we learn that the rabbit, he liked to eat carrot. So now we knew how we can get the rabbit. You know what I mean? That is not science. What they do have is kind of a practice of patterns, watching patterns happen. If we use this medicine with this virus, what would happen? We try it. It doesn't work. We try something else. So, this is not science, but they call it science. Um, yeah, it's not science. You know, I remember I told you before, like I have, uh, if I drink too much coffee, uh, that uh, uh, impact my throat. Actually, this is why my voice now is not really, I mean, not now, every day almost, is not really good as it should be uh, because I drink coffee. But in, I think, the year 2010, something like that, my voice totally disappeared. Once I woke up in the morning, I can't even talk. And I don't go to doctors. I don't get sick, you know, thank God. But then I have to go. I mean, that I, there's something very wrong. I have to go live. People are waiting for me, and I can't talk. So I went there. They do the check, blood, blah, blah, blah. Open your mouth, say, ah, say, ooh. How, how old are you? How much you weight? Ask me all the questions. I write down. I can't even talk. And then they could not find. They said, you are very healthy. There's no reason. Nothing. A lot of money and then I notice that if I stop drinking coffee my voice come back if I drink coffee my voice get my throat get hurt the more I drink coffee so it was just an observation of me and my behavior lead me to understand that it was the coffee so all those doctors who they were sucking the blood of me which is the money I the little money I was making and then they come with the conclusion and say is that you have no problem. Nobody asked me what you do, what you drink. Nobody asked me anything about coffee or food. Nothing, nothing, nothing. They took, you know, from blood, my blood. You know, it was just coffee. So where is the science? I stopped drinking coffee. My voice is coming back. I drink too much coffee, my voice is up here. Right now, if I go and drink too much coffee, and by the way, I drink too much coffee. Like like now, I'm not drinking coffee. I drink uh, uh, about two, I don't know what they call it in English. You know Greek coffee, the Greek coffee? Big container. I make one in the morning, and then I make one afternoon. So each one of those have maybe about... I mean, this is a very strong coffee. It's not like American coffee. This is not water. This is real coffee. So now, supposedly, I'm not drinking coffee, yet I drink two heavy duty a day. Before, I used to drink way more. To the point, my lips are dark. You believe it? My lips are dark because of coffee. This is how much coffee I drink. You used to be. Uh, <clears throat> Ummu al amufadal. Okay. Yeah, you see the that's that's because you have a confusion.
you can ask me next time we'll go live on air so we can put the reference in the screen <clears throat> maybe I can actually I can grab the reference right now let us see <clears throat> I hate it when I type and I'm typing in English when I'm searching in Arabic. Let us see. All right. Are you there, the one who asked? You have a wrong understanding. Here, this is the book, and the name of the book. It half al khira lil bawsari variant number five. It says that from uh, Ibn Ishaq, from Hussein, the son of Abdullah, and Ikramat is uh, highlight so people can see what we are reading. <clears throat> that the messenger of Allah, you see here it says from from Ibn Abbas, from Ibn Ummul Fadl, Bintul Harith. Ummul Fadl is the one reporting. The story, the daughter of Al Harith, that Allah Messenger, when he saw Umm Habiba, wa hiya fawq al Fatim, faqal li an balagat baniya al Abbas hadhihi wa ana hay la atazawajnha. So it is Umm Habiba, and this is mentioned in in uh, by Ahmad ibn Hanbal too, and this is the reference. All right, so I hope I didn't answer you, my friend. All right. Are you there, the person who asked? Did you see the reference? Yeah, so we you know I don't say things unless I'm sure from it. <clears throat> Please answer Atif Farhan. What do you answer for what, Atif? Does Allah pray in the Quran? Allah, He says Shahada. Um, you know, uh, uh, there's no Allah. What Allah? Can you please show the reference satanic verses or abrogated? You see, if if uh, if satanic verses are abrogated, that means Quran is satanic verses because you cannot say abrogated. The Quran says, which means Allah will delete, not abrogate. Not abrogate. All right. But however, as long as the Quran admit that Allah is saying supposedly, whatever shaitan he throw, Allah will delete from the Quran. How we knew that this verse itself is not from shaitan himself? He's asking the link you showed early for his reference. Link about what? What reference? 
Atif, I'd respond many times. I keep asking you, what do you want? I mean, what I would do? I have many people asking me question. You keep saying to me, can you answer me? Can you answer me? What is the question? I don't respond to anything. So all this time I'm responding to people and now I don't respond to anything. <laughs> so what I was doing for the last two hours. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, some some people they are like kids. They think I'm their their waiter, and I see nothing but them. I have we have seven hundred people. They are protesting, and I'm watching the chat, looking for reference, answering this guy and that guy. And now you are complaining. Go leave. Don't come here. Okay, Christian Prince is not answering you. Don't give him. A, don't don't pay him salary. Fire him. What I can do? Can you please share a replacement? If any, because what delete he bring better? Uh, yeah, that is that different verse. But he was asking about the satanic verses. But you see here the verse saying that uh, whatever shaitan he throw in the mouth of Muhammad, Allah will take it off. But that's mean. I answered him about Al Fadi. What Fadi? I showed him it's Umu Habiba. So what I did in the screen? Oh, you mean the guy who was asking for reference? Huh. Well, those references are exist in many places, you know. But uh, let me see if because this is Google Book and Google Book, you cannot use Google Translation to translate. Let me see. Right now, I don't see the chat because I'm looking for reference. I can post for you the same uh, website I was showing you, which is Google Books, but that will not allow you to use Google Translation. Here we go. I found a different website, which is easier. And this is the link. All right. <clears throat> well, I can I don't take any reference as long as it's in English. Any reference, it's not in Arabic. I don't consider it to be true. Secondly, Ummul Fadl is the one who reported the hadith, not the one who asked for her hand. All right, I just showed you on the screen. I don't know. You you don't want to believe? Don't believe. All right. <clears throat> the hate in front of me it says that Ummul Fadl she said that the Prophet said etc. When he saw Ummu Habiba, eh. you have different story. Believe in whatever you want. Muslim books, by the way, are confusing books, so I understand that you might have, uh, you know, you might have different understanding, especially the way those books are written. But for me, what I know, it is Ummu Habiba. Maybe you have a better knowledge than mine. Um, Yeah, I don't accept actually any reference in English because uh, English reference first, it can be corrupt, false. Secondly, they are confusing. Uh, the numbers are wrong because they make their own numbers. If you go and read the Mikathir in English, and read the Mikathir in Arabic, you will find that is no match. You know? 
There's no match. No, Muslims have many resources of uh, stories. As an example, the depend in your sect. Each sect have different story or the same story. Even the names change. The same as Muhammad. As an example, Muhammad, he could not quote even once correct name. Right? Yeah, there is many. I mean, I just showed you one... Uh, uh, one reference, but doesn't mean this is the only reference. There's tons of books speaking about that. Right? This is just one reference of many references. There's endless numbers of books. Uh, Actually, here I just found this website. Look like it's a translation, Google translation for a link. I just, uh, you know, click in it. Here we go. Let me send it for you. Islam, why Shia they hate Aisha? Because Islam is a political movement. Uh, Islam is not a religion. Islam is uh, a mafia to conquer, take over money slavery jewelries power you know do you see guys the link i posted you will see there it says ummul fadl bin to harith said that the messenger saw ummu habiba ibn to abbas bin to abbas bint mean the daughter who is above al fatim which means she is just finished suckling and he said if she live uh, if, if I live, you know, I will marry her. Do you see it, the one who asked me? Here we go, you have it even in English. You said that last Quran says, Allah not burden anyone with beyond his ability. But you say Allah burden people to proceed Quran, which they are unable to do. You say it's a contradiction. Uh, you see, if you if you go over any words the Quran says, you will find that there is a contradiction, and we can go all over. As an example, Allah forgive not sin for those who do associate with Him. Correct? Okay. And then Allah forgive those who believe in Him. So. Do you forgive those who associate with you or you don't? Because if those who associate with you, you don't forgive them, that means the statement is mistaken. You should say, I forgive not those who associate with me and never repent. So if you say, I, I forgive those, I don't forgive those who associate, and then I forgive those who associate. Which one is the one to follow? As an example, most of those Muslims who follow Muhammad later, they were, you know, associating with Allah. So you forgive or you don't. So, depend how deep you want to think about any statement he say. But for me, I focus always in big issues. You know what I mean? Because Muslims, they can go around those things. Okay, uh, uh, Atif, just take a hike, my friend. I'm done with you. You are here just to complain. Just go. No, I don't want to see him no more. I'm done with this guy. Uh, All translations in any translation in the Quran, not only Yusuf Ali, is 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 fabricated. I, uh, I I never find any translation is correct. Why Muslim cannot wear a, a golden ring? 
Muhammad he 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 you know he got a gold ring. Some story they say he killed a Jew and he took it. And then Muhammad he get busy with the ring. He keep looking at it, you know. A savage guy, he never have a ring in his hand. So he's very excited. And then people they start talking about him. And then Muhammad he says, Oh, you know what? This ring he took me away from Allah or took me away from you. So and then he announced that men they cannot wear gold rings. And the question here, why Allah did not say such a thing? I mean, where Muhammad he come with this? Anything else before we go for today? Actually, I made a mistake. I should not go longer so people they can download the video easy. And now the video became so long. Maybe I have to uh, rebroadcast the video, just the part we answer the false miracles in the Quran to make it shorter. Anything else? Hijab actually is not a cover for the head. Hijab is a curtain. See, mistakenly, Muslims, they are the last one to know. Hijab never was something you put in the head. You know, if you go right now in the Quran and you type the word hijab, what you will see? Curtain. Read chapter 7, verse number 46. And between them, there's a curtain. There's a veil between them. Do you see it? Do you see it? This is the veil here is translation for the word hijab. So it's a, it is something you put between you and someone else, not something in the top of you. Are you following? So hijab is not aware in the head. And you can go like, you know, chapter 17, verse number 45, the same. You put between them a curtain, a hijab, between them, not something in the top of you. Chapter 19, verse number 17, suppose this is about Mary, the mother of Christ. She placed a screen, screen herself, a curtain. This is hijab. So she was she was behind the curtain, so they didn't see her. So all of this, and even you see Allah Himself, He have a hijab. Chapter forty-two, verse number fifty-one. Allah never speak to anyone except from behind a curtain. You see it. We mentioned that many time about Muhammad death. It's okay, guys. Today, uh, you know, like we are fi finished for day for today. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow or when we go live on here again, ask me those questions. I will be happy to give you more reference because, you know, as you know, I mean, this is really endless. However, for me, I really I always have a pleasure to speak to all of you. Forgive me if sometimes I lose my patience because this is really need a lot of patience. Because imagine you say the same thing always and then the people ask you the same question again. I mean, I just. You, you give reference yesterday and then the second day they ask you for the same question sometimes even the same day in the same minutes people they say he did not answer us as you just saw you need a lot of patience and whatever you do people are not happy i don't know what to do <laughs> however i'm really grateful for all of you those who like me and those who don't like me it's okay for me, it's very important that I am sharing the truth and the truth will set you free. I'm doing this to the Lord and he is doing it to you, which means the good thing is coming from the Lord, not from me. For me, I'm just a human being who do bad and good. Sometimes I do bad more than the good. Sometimes I do good more than the bad. However, whatever good is coming is coming to you from the Lord, not from me. The Lord he used, the one he chose, and it's up to you to use it as you wish the lord he says for free you took for free you give and if we have little knowledge to share with you i will be happy always to share it and what i have is very little compared to what is in this world you know maybe the lord he want me to be a person uh, to guard the truth 
in front of the cult of Islam so your children will not be deceived. And I hope that soon we will have more and more people who they can do what I am doing and even better. And why not? The Lord who created me, he can create way better than me. I am no one. And he can make somebody who come with an amazing knowledge as long as the knowledge is used for his good to help people that will be wonderful and we should support that person so I say thank you for all of you I say I pray that the Lord will open the eyes of the Muslims to see the truth and the truth always will prevail don't never be worried about we as a Christians maybe some of you saying oh you know Islam might take over Islam will never take over anything because Islam does not exist what you see today is Muslim fabricating their own Islam. Islam, the true Islam, does not exist. Not a single Muslim country want to practice Islam. Not even in Saudi Arabia. Look around you, my friend. Where is the Islam? It does not exist. Islam, if there is no government, there is no Islam. And all the Islamic government are not Islamic. Because as long as you don't have Sharia Allah, and 100% Sharia Allah, not 5%, it means Islam does not exist. So, Islam is not really, I'm not really worried about Islam taking over anything. Islam is a joke. Islam is destroyed. Islam is millions of sects. Each one of them is opposing each other. And they are killing each other as we speak. And the house of the devil is divided. And the devil, he conquered himself. For me, I'm just helping you. So you will not be deceived. And your children will not be fooled if you sit with your child you can teach him you can give him some important priceless information maybe because you don't speak arabic maybe because you did not learn i mean it's not your fault i for me i maybe you know i was i grew up in the middle east i speak arabic if i don't know arabic i will not know any of this the key point of all what i know is the arabic language if i don't know arabic i will be depending in translation and most of it is false false and fabrication so the Lord, he used someone from the Arab to help from to help those who they are not from the Arab. So they cannot be deceived by the devil of the Arab, Muhammad. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you soon again, Christ is Lord. Islam is false. Have a good day.